Stream elements. Light underscore candle is now live. Stream and just chatting on shape design stream.
Hello. Grizzly Jello. Ahoy. Renio hi, Renio hi. <laughs> Welcome, Jello. Good to see you here. And uh, thank you to the whole House of Cats crew for the, the shout out yesterday. Uh, and also thank you to Niz Vicious for following uh, yesterday as well. How's it going? How are we doing? Mm. Pouring uh, an absurd amount of honey into my tea, as it should be. Oh, and Atticus is already trying to attack my cords. He knows that he is the subject of today's design stream. Let me get some things set up here. I've got a, a document set up already for all the stuff that we designed today. And I've got some loose ideas for Grizzly how, Jello. Uh, yes, we always <laughs> share the love. It's a good way to be. Um, I've got some loose ideas for how to approach this whole thing, but um, improvisational engineering design is really my format here. <laughs> so let's get some some background tunes real quick. A Brennifer. A little bit of Patsu. Will. Let me make sure the volume's gonna be good. This song is a weird one to like start trying to sync up audio with because it does get louder after a while. Hi Cactus. This is the boy that we're dealing with today. Hey buddy. Hey Mr. Friend. This guy right here. Let me turn that down a little bit. This guy has been keeping me up. Uh, from like midnight to 4 a.m. Uh, for the last handful of months. It's not every night, but it's enough of the time that we need some solutions. But look at that. Look at how adorable he is. He's a baby. Grizzly Jello. Soft. What a handsome B.O.I. though. A Brennifer. Yeah. Ooh, naughty catechus. This is the, the trouble. He's so cute, he gets away with it. With depriving his father of sleep. You can sit in the, the co-gaming chair today. Little cactus. Um, so let's flop over to this. I've got a little mock-up of Atticus, uh, so that if we so choose, as we design uh, apparaticuses to help handle this boy, a Brennifer. Awesome. We can set things up there. Grizzly Jello. Ha ha ha! The cuter they are, the more they get away with. That's true. Grizzly Jello. Oh. Um. So. The design challenge that we're trying to approach here is that Atticus keeps me awake every night. He does this by making a lot of noise uh, around his litter box. He'll sit in there and just like scratch on the wall uh, over and over. Um, and other than that, he's just kind of a, a nuisance. He does a lot of sprinting around and finding anything that could possibly make noise and uh, make a noise on it. And so I've got some, some theories here. I noticed that he is uh, very quiet when he thinks I'm awake. Like, um, you know, even pretty late into the evening or on nights when I'm like up pretty late, he'll be like pretty calm and quiet until it gets to the point where I'm actually sleeping. So idea number one is going to be a decoy dad. Uh, that looks to be just about, that's fine for that ratio there. Set up a little decoy dad Grizzly head on Jello. top. <laughs> I'm going for like a um, little pig person in um, the game of life. That's kind of the the vibe here. I think that's pretty good. I could lift this up a little bit more. Hey buddy, you're gonna sit in my lap while we figure this out? 
He was trying to steal Q-tips earlier. I don't know what his fascination is. But he's sitting here and he's purring a little bit. He's going after my tea. Um, so this is going to be the decoy dad. And this thing just needs to, like, stay Grizzly in motion. Jello. Yeah, my cat loves to chew on the <laughs> dips for some reason, too. I think it's also, like, he knows where they're stored, so it's like a little heist that he gets to plan. Um, let's see, yeah, I want to make kind of a disc that this is going to sit on top of, or like a, a track benefit. that it can follow. Q-tips are great fun for the kitties here, too. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's gonna sit on this track. It's gonna kind of go around in a circle. We'll put like a, a sound box on it so that uh, it says things that I say every so often. He's nibbling on my, uh, my index finger while I'm trying to use the mouse. It's not great, bud. So it's gonna go around on this track here. Oh, there's a way to like import images. I don't know if I Grizzly wanna mess Jello. with that too much. He knows you're doing something for him, LOL. He's trying to sabotage the whole operation. He says, no dad, I wanna keep you awake at night. We'll set up um, like a little speaker on this thing. Let's put that like here. Let's give it kind of a an array of little circles like a speaker do. over yeah oh that's actually kind of perfect and then four down dang that's looking professional and we'll just uh, have that go out a little ways So that's where the, the dad sounds will come out of this thing as it rolls around on its track. Um, let's see, what else does it need to have? Well, if it's going to be Atticus's dad, it needs to have some knuckles for him to bite. So we'll give a, a little shoulder joint here. Going down to an arm, like so. A Brennifer. Dad sounds and knuckles, smiley yeah, face. That's all I am to this cat. As long as he's got some knuckles to bite and some ha sounds to hear me say, then, uh, then he's content. Okay, so all of that I should be able to carve out nice and quick. And we're gonna, I'd like to add that to the main thing. There we go. Just make it a little symmetrical. And we actually want this part too. That would resolve the whole problem. Okay, we just need to give it a little dad hand there. Oh gosh, designing a hand in this system is gonna be kind of a nightmare. Let's go with just some of these. <laughs> Let's 
uh, and let's approximate like the the wrist also to just be like a big circle um, and then we'll just kind of connect these things to that <laughs> this is gonna be horrifying but you know if it's horrifying enough then instead of deploying this thing at night to keep the boy active I'll just uh, or keep the boy distracted, I'll just deploy it during the day to keep him awake so that uh, he doesn't Grizzly sleep all night. Yes, this may be a terrifying creation, lol. Yeah. This is your robot father. Come bite on my phalanges to allow your meat father to sleep. Grizzly Jello. <laughs> Just a little Frankenstein action. Nothing more to see here. Nope. At least I'm not building this thing out of a, a cadaver or anything. Like this thing is totally Oh, see that hand doesn't look too bad. It's even uh the right way around. It's a little tall. But I could set it up. Like that. If I wanted to get real fancy, I can go into it from this side. That's good. And I can add some kind of dimension to it. I can carve out a little bit. Because my hand isn't just flat, it should kind of curve a little bit. Let's uh, have like a, a circle here. And then we'll spline our way down through kind of to the, the wrist. And then back up. We'll do roughly the same thing here. Okay, and now, so that should be fine. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna extrude this sketch shape. And I actually want to take the intersection of these things. Oh, see that makes an all right hand. The only problem is that it ignores like all of the rest of this thing that I've got here. So if I wanted to do things this way, um, it would actually require that I like start with the hand and build out, but that's fine because I can actually just do this. And now instead of adding, I can remove this shape across and I've only cut a little bit off the thumb can I roll that back nope <laughs> okay we're getting warmer no so I actually want to remove all of this outside piece can I do that So give me like the internal bit of this shape as well, please. Nope, not all of that. This is what I get for building a sketch inside of this piece.
I've really done this to myself, but Okay, let's let's not do that at this moment. The hand can stay goofy and large. It's probably better to have like a large hand anyway, because unlike me, this machine is not gonna be able to uh, heal after being chomped on by an Atticus. So this really just you know, gives us a little bit of extra security that, uh, you know, I could make the hand replaceable. Let's see how we're doing on scale, because I, I really have not put much effort into scale here. There's our Atticus. And here's Robodad. Offering up some phalanges to be munched on. That's not too bad. <laughs> what uh, what ideas do y'all have for dealing with this situation where Atticus keeps me awake at night? I like this idea. But I'm thinking maybe um, maybe I just need some like soundproof box that I can sleep in. Like a uh, Grizzly Jello. This is a very interesting one, honestly. Yeah, I, I should uh, mention if I haven't already, my goal here is not to make like a practical solution a to this problem. Hire a nanny to keep him awake while you're at work. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's an idea. What if... What if I've got my my classroom, which is probably like what roughly these dimensions? Um, oh nope, keep me in the sketch. Let's give the walls a little bit of depth. So that I can uh, nope, not sketch. Let's extrude this whole thing down a tiny bit to make the floor. Bring the sketch back. Extrude these up to make the walls. And I guess realistically, if I'm making like a, a diorama here, we only want a couple of the walls. Should probably get rid of these ones in the front. Okay, so I've got my classroom. I've got um, some like desks and such in here, I suppose. We'll just have those be like rectangles. Something like that. <laughs> oh, see, I'd like to actually select the rectangles themselves. Not the opposite of the rectangles. Okay, there we go. Got some desks in here. What I'm proposing is we set up a series of tubes around kind of the top of my classroom so that Atticus can roam around up there, distract my students, all of that. And, um, you know, we don't have to worry about like allergens or anything like that. I know the uh, the scale on this is definitely not going to be great. Grizzly Jello. But that's okay. Yes, a tube system like a hamster, lol. Yeah, absolutely. Let's 
let's um, real quick these two pieces here we want to make oh no so I'd like to just actually control this little bit oh let's see can I go into these Okay, I can Jello. just say new. Maybe a kitty wheel where he's awarded with treats to tire him out. There we go. Yeah, I'll absolutely set that up in a second here too. Let's make these now a little bit transparent. So got kind of glass tubes up there. We could set up like an ant farm thing for him on one of the walls. Just so he's got uh, some traversal options. Set up kind of a, a larger nest thing in here. Grizzly Jello. Renio LOL. <laughs> yeah, that can go out a little ways further. Now, the question is, will it let me round all of this out as much as I want to? Yeah, it kind of looks like it. It's really thinking about it. Let's uh, real quick make this new part more transparent as well. So he's got a little space that he can hang out in up there. And uh, if this were my classroom, if this is the back of the room, then this is like the window. So that would be pretty fun for him. But I like the idea of uh, a hamster wheel for him as well. Uh, so let's, let's set that up. This just go out a little bit and then go back into the sketch. Oh, oh, I don't want to edit, I just want this sketch to be visible so I can extrude the base out further. Got some kind of spooky patsu going on now. Let's see. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna turn that up a tiny bit. Or maybe I just need to increase the volume on my end because I think that that's probably pretty good for stream. Let me know um, if the volume levels need to be shifted ever. I think that's pretty good. A Brennifer. It is good. Thank you. Grizzly Jello. That's good. I appreciate it. Let's see. It's been a while since I did a, a circular pattern on anything, but I'd like to 
create some decent spokes on this. Something kind of sensible. So I think I need to select the circle first. Nope, <laughs> very much no. That's saying, okay, I can give you some circles around the origin here. No, we don't want that. We actually want these to be around this point. Can I just tell you to go around that point? Nope. Oh, there we go. Now I can change like where that's actually going. Let's say like a solid six of these things. It's pretty good. And we've got to make it so it's not liking just adding those right now. What weird geometry are you running into? These down here? Oh, you know what? Uh, on shape kind of acts part time as a philosopher. And when it runs into things like this, it really freaks out. It's looking at this point and seeing that no matter how far I zoom in, uh, these things like, touch at an infinitesimally small point, uh, and it doesn't like that. So here's what I can do about that. Super quick fix. This is no longer a point, it's a circle. And you can calm down about all of that. Can I just, yep, select all of that in there, great. And then each of these spokes. Spokes themselves, I don't need to go out that far. We'll have that be just kind of a little thing here. And we'll have the ring itself go out further. if it'll allow me to. I'm running into kind of the same problem as before. So actually, I think I need to start out with this extrusion. Just doing the central peg and the circle bit and then it should let me hang out with the rest fanboys thanks for the follow welcome um, if you're just tuning in we are uh, trying to design some different devices to keep my cat from waking me up at night I'm gonna scoop him up again I need to set up some um, like channel point rewards that uh, bring the cats into action here. Here is the boy who awakens me in the night and the, the crude 3D designed approximation of him. Yes, we want kitty redeems. <laughs> Grizzly Atticus. Jello. That way we can bother him too. That might be the strat, honestly. Just uh, make it redeemable that we keep him awake all day. But this is the boy. He makes a pretty good scarf. Oh, now he's biting me. As he likes to do. Yep. See? He goes for the knuckles. We call it the knuckle suckle, because this is just what he likes to do. Oh, buddy. But he's purring. 
fanboy is. He's having a grand old time. Love Nibble's face with tears of joy. A Brennifer. Baby boy. Yeah. Okay, dude. Grizzly Jello. You gonna help He out? just wants a taste, lol. I think he's got a, a pretty good sense at this point. He he bites me quite often. And he's good at uh, not biting me too hard. He's good at, like... He pretty much never uses his claws, um, but he is a noisy little critter in the middle of the night. Just realized I never turned this light on. That's a little bit better. Oh, and we've got a Daphne on the move. A little daffodil. Daffodil pickle. Um, for anyone who hasn't seen her before, she is wobbly. She's got uh, cerebellar hypoplasia, which is like basically cat cerebral palsy. Oh, she's a cutie. Yeah. A Brennifer. She's very sweet. Wobbly kitten. And she uh, will usually join me during my streams and sit where Atticus is sitting right now. Oh, she's gotten some food. She's adjusting. She's making her way over to the water bowl. What a brave little fluffer. Oh, no, she's going back to the food. Yeah. She does not keep me up at night. She uh, pretty much likes to pick a spot Grizzly and Jello. just sit there forever. Ad break, LOL. Oh, is there an ad break going on right now? I guess you, you wouldn't be able to tell me. I'll just keep it on the cats for now then. Let's think about what we want to do for this next design. Um, oh, we were working on the, the hamster wheel. Okay, so I was going to extrude these parts, that's right. And these just need to go out a little ways. Hold this whole operation together. And um, there's got to be something to like entice him to keep running. So I think I'm gonna try my best to create another dad hand inside of here. It's the thing he like unambiguously loves more than anything else to chomp on a hand. Or maybe I could make a little churro packet. Let's see. In any case, we're going to need a stand over here. Nope, I don't actually want to extrude that whole thing. Let's create a sketch here. Just a little something. Bring that up to like this level. We'll create kind of a, a plate out this way. Just needs to be. Giganti or 56. Hey, Aya. Welcome, I made Gigantor. It. Good to have you here. We are designing a bunch of things to. Try and keep Atticus occupied at night. Oh, and Daphne is scratching away at her little suitcase, as she likes to do. Okay, we're getting out of the actual Pazzo music, so let's get back to that. because I don't know if this is copywritten. <laughs> Here we'll go for this playlist. Um, 
And I've got to plug Patsu. I don't think they need it, but you know, it's always good Light to. underscore candle. Share with y'all what we're listening slash to. Slash www.youtube.com slash watch. V equals 47IOP4SW and list equals OLAK5UI underscore Mertenka 1FSHQ9TPPTGR underscore 1NWEJ0 Maha 7I. Thank you, Restream. Couldn't have done it without you. A Brennifer. Dang. <laughs> I'm going to turn that up a little bit on my end. Hopefully that's still sounding okay for you. Uh, but this is going to be our little churro holder. Looks like a hamster wheel. Yeah, so this one is just to kind of keep him moving throughout the day. We'd set up like a churro here, set up his hamster wheel. A um, couple of other things we've got here. We've got a little mock-up of Atticus. It's his spitting image. Um, this was the Robo Dad I designed. It'll go around in a circle on a little track. Uh, it's got like a, a speaker built in that'll just say me things every so often. Uh, and it's got a hand for him to nibble on. Then we were talking about how, well, if I could just take him into my classroom, then that would solve a lot of these problems because I could personally keep him awake all day. Um, so I've got this kind of hamster setup uh, that I would put on one of the walls of my classroom. And then, yeah, this has been kind of the, the most recent thing that we're looking at. Um, and I think the well might be running kind of dry, at least for me in this moment, on ideas for how to deal with this little Atticus fella. So if there are other things y'all would like to see me try to design, uh, now is the time to get some recommendations out there. I'm gonna bring up um, the Cassette Beasts Beasts again because they just have some really fun designs. Um, and last stream, we designed a bunch of bridges. Wow. All make sense <laughs> and look great. Yeah, they're not meant to be like super practical. But there's a little bit there. Yeah, last stream we designed one of the creatures from Cassette Beasts. This is a, a master sword I designed, by the way. I was pretty happy with. Grizzly Jello. What about a catnip humidifier, lol? <laughs> I like that. That'd be a, a pretty quick one, I think. Humidifiers always have that, like, distinct shape to them. Where it's like... A uh, little kind of top bit there. Then it kind of like splines Grizzly outward. Jello. Cassette beasts look like a fun game. Yeah, no, cassette beast is a ton of fun. I would highly recommend it. So this is kind of the general shape we're going for. We're gonna take that, revolve it around that point. We need a little uh, catnip Lemon receptacle kind. on the side. Hello. Welcome, Lemon. How are you doing? Oh gosh, how do I make this, like, not a bong <laughs> is uh, the, the challenge at the moment. Well, I do need to make Lemon the kind. top open. I'm okay. I like your music. Oh, thank you. Grizzly Jello. Yeah, this is more Patsu. Gigantier 56. Hi, Lemon. Yeah, this is Patsu, uh, the artist that we're listening to. They're a lot of fun. Okay, so... I feel like we just toss 
catnip directly down into it. Or probably like more catnip essential oils. Um, but uh, Lemonkind. that might be how this works. Hayat Grizzly Jalu and at Gigantier 56. set up kind of a a little spot for him to sit in. I mean, this should also be like Oh. Oh wait, I've got a another idea that we'll have to explore. Grizzly Jello. Maybe in addition At to this. Kind, Renio high, Renio high. But uh, one thing that Atticus loves even more than uh, biting his dad is water. He is just so fascinated by water. So if we set up something like this and honestly just had like a fountain going, I think that would be enough to keep him entertained. That might be the way we go with this. Set up a little... Probably from the side view. A Brennifer. That's such a good <laughs> idea. And this would just pour like down into the end over there. I want this to go Lemon kind. symmetrically. When does summer start for you? Summer, uh, so like, uh, spring classes are done, um, like pretty much the second week in June. And then I'm teaching summer school. Oh no, I don't want to revolve. I want to fill it. Um, and then I'm teaching summer school. So I'm not like... 100% done with teaching until um, sorry until uh, July okay this is kind of free floating here but you get the idea it's almost like a, a sous vide machine Honestly, just a sous vide machine would probably be enough to keep Atticus occupied. Put a little bit of catnip in there, be making some catnip tea at the same time. I don't know if y'all have had catnip tea, but it's actually pretty tasty. Oh, he's going after my knuckle again. He's journeying into the knuckle verse. Hi there, buddy. See, and he's like, trying to hold me there with his paw, but he doesn't have his claws out at all. He's a very Loving respectful kind. little man. Knuckleverse boy. Mm -hmm. His people need him. <laughs> so yeah, I think this uh, meets the criteria of just making like a constant fountain. He will... Um, Grizzly Jello. One of our cats likes to put her <laughs> toys in water and make her own tea, lol. Aww. Atticus desperately wants to be friends with Daphne, and he has occasionally taken like some of his favorite toys and just dropped them like in her food bowl to see if she'll play with them. Um, and like, you know, when I go and brush my teeth in the morning, he will follow me into the bathroom and like jump into the uh, bathtub oh, sweet B -O -I. and he will like make a real cat sort of meow in only two circumstances one is when he's sitting in the tub and trying to get me to turn on the water and the other is like every time I sneeze he makes a little like concerned meow sound even if he's like in a whole other part of the apartment I just hear him like echo it back to me He's a sweet guy. I would just like it if he slept. 
Um, which brings me to, I think, the probably best solution here. Hey there, buddy. Here's what we're doing. This right here is uh, going to be planet Earth. Oh, and faces of the sketch, I actually only want to select half of this. You can tell it's Earth Gigantier on account 56. of how blue it is. Need some type of motor to pull the water up. <laughs> oh yeah, probably. <laughs> no, uh, I'm only like 25% uh, designing any of these things. So this is Earth. Uh, this here is going to be the Satelliticus. Ooh, that was tasty. Something like that there. Something like this here. We'll just mirror. Oh, nope. That is not the way. So ultimately, a lot of the challenges that Atticus deals with just boil down to the fact that he is a kitten. Um, so what we're going to do is send him up into space, have him orbit the Earth at uh, a fraction of the speed of light, so that uh, relativity kicks into gear. Well, actually, I'd want him moving much slower than Earth. Um, we'll send him around like a black hole or something so that, uh, yeah, relativity does its thing. And then he just comes back uh, an adult cat. I think that's maybe the, the best solution to, <laughs> to the current problems is just time. And if not time, accelerating time. Okay, with that, what we've got is the Robo Dad. We've got the the hamster enclosure classroom thing. We've got a little hamster wheel here. Lots of hamster themed solutions. Um, we've got the sous vide machine, water fountain, uh, catnip diffuser, and we've got. Uh, sending the boy into space and having him uh, just age at a different rate from the rest of our planet which I think is a, a pretty good set of solutions so what do we want to design from here uh, I spent some time last stream just designing uh, the London Bridge <laughs> in uh, pretty extensive detail and also uh, designing one of the cassette beast critters. Oh, I think I know another critter that I'd really like to design from cassette beasts. I've got to find out how to search for this thing. Yeah, this is this is what I want to design. This boy is named Traffic Crab. And he's a little hermit crab with an angy little eye hanging out inside of a traffic cone. And I think that's maybe the most adorable little thing. Traffic Crab is a plastic type species often described as a big traffic cone crab. 
That's so true. Uh, the traffic, caps cro uh, traffic crab's cone isn't actually part of its body. It's merely a traffic cone that is washed up on the shores of New World and has been occupied by the creature. It is said that in the past, they would instead find other objects to live inside. So this is going to be the boy. I'm going to design him. Um, I'm mostly keeping like my reference over on my other screen here. But if y'all need to see him at any point while I'm designing this, like, and whenever I'm trying to mention a specific feature, I'll pull him back over. I think a good place to start is going to be the cone itself. So let's go from this right view here. And it's kind of up at an angle. So I'm going to do something like... I think that's probably an appropriate angle for it. This would be kind of the the edge of the cone. See, I should be able to just tell these to coincide. There we go. Doing this at an angle is gonna make things tricky. Where's the midpoint of this line? Okay, there we go. Um, cone probably goes out like that much on the top. I think that's a pretty good angle for a traffic cone. And I'm just doing half of this right now because this part I'm going to spin around. Um, so I think that's... Let's just see how this is looking at this point. Revolve this around here. And then extrude this out symmetrically. That's looking pretty good. And then let's um, shell out the bottom of this. Yeah, look at that. That's pretty good. There's a little bit of like retexturing I can do here, but so far I can say this part should all be orange. A Brennifer. Nice. <laughs> and then I want to make just a little for the uh, kind of gray or white part around the top there. This is going to just go out a little ways. I just need that to be a separate thing so that I can Rotate Gigantier this. 56. Shell out is terminology used in this software. Oh yeah, so shelling out just means like um, from that face, I want to carve everything out so that everything is like a uniform thickness on the inside. So rather than having to do all of like the math on the inside of this, I just said shell it out, and it cut out a little bit here and then mostly like hollowed out to uh, that inside bit. Okay, and this is a new piece. Yeah, that's actually looking pretty good already. Um, then the traffic crab has a couple of little hands out front and in the back and probably like a, I keep 
like right clicking to try and move this around the same way that I can move things around here. I'm guessing he's got a little bit of a, a, a body down below there. And he's got his angy little eye with his, uh, his eyebrow over it. So I think if I start by creating a little bit of body here, that's going to help me move through the rest of this a little bit more smoothly. Oh no, I don't actually want to shell that out. I want to create a sketch on this face. It's kind of an awkward angle. Like I've chosen to make everything on an angle relative to this hat. Although really, what I could do is because I've made this central, I could just make the body on this like side plane. So I think I'll do that. Let's just say it's roughly kind of an arc down through here. like that and then kind of a steeper thing in the front and this is what the eye is going to affix onto and then the back piece can kind of come up like into the uh, the cone there a little bit I think that's pretty good for a body. And this is going to be a brand new thing. I'm going to carve out the sides a little bit. I'm going to need to make this a little asymmetrical. Um, second radius, I think this is the one that I want to be more, right? No, this one I think should stay 0.5. Let's see what happens when I make this like one. Now hold up, if I make both of these 0.5, okay that's fine, if I make both of them 1, that's too much, 0.75, that's pretty good, that's looking like a crabby little body, and I'm going to make this body piece it's pretty much just black. Let's go with kind of a dark gray. Um, we'll be able to attach kind of the arms on there and the legs can kind of connect to the back. The eye is, I think the next big feature that I want to take care of. And for that, I'm gonna sketch from this side view again because the eye should kind of uh, curve a little bit outward. It's kind of a little bit lensy there. If I could make part of this like just totally flat then that's something I could build the eyebrows off of but I might have to do that 
a little separately. Let's see for now if I revolve this around here. Uh, this is going to be a new piece. Let's make this red and a little transparent. That's pretty cool. Um, I need to make it much larger, but then that's going to be like a good placement for the eye, I think. Ooh, that is spicy. Let's see, I want to keep that center point pretty much the same. Okay, how's that? That's a bigger eye. How's the... So the eye should be just about half the width of the traffic cone itself. So actually this needs to be much bigger. And probably lower to account for that. It's not really going that far out from the body, though, is the thing. Oh, that's actually pretty good. I need to... this is being annoying to me. Let's actually... Um, hold up, can I do something in this sketch to create the eye? So this piece I'll still just extrude outward. But I think I'd like to create basically a copy of this just a little bit further out. Hmm. This whole sketch piece, I just want to be able to move. It's probably at this point worth just restarting that because it's not moving the way I want it to. So I think probably just about this far out is good. And this only needs to represent like half of the total eye. Still not quite as big as I'd like it to be. I think I'm just getting like afraid to make it too big. But really the eye is just about as big as the the body section. Like that's that's getting warmer. I think that's good for now. I don't know that I want it to be 
that transparent. What does the tessellation quality do? Oh, it just changes the... I mean, it, one of the things it does is change rendering performance. I think that's pretty much fine for the eye for now. There's a little bit more like fancy stuff we could do to it. Like, um, I could... Do something like this. Oh yeah, I like that. It's a small change, but I think that works out for it. Okay, now he needs two big angry front arms. And if I could set these up in a way that they generate just symmetrically, that would be great. So I'll sketch on top of this here. They kind of, for each of the arms, um, It looks like they, they've kind of got this shape going on. Something out here, kind of a larger side piece. And then the back of the arm is probably something like that. It's just this thing, but scaled up pretty significantly. a little bit too round. Let's start with just flat lines to get an idea of what the shape's going to be. These claws are really larger than the rest of the body. set up the, the back legs while I'm at it. They're just kind of looks like little triangular nubbins. if I tell it just extrude out this sketch. Gives us kind of a rough idea of ratios. These back legs I actually want to affix to the ground pretty solidly so I might not have them reach out in this way but the front legs I think I could take this shape and carve it to be what I want it to be.
So let's actually just select these front ones for now. If I just fill it these down. What's the max distance you're going to let me go for? Okay, so at 0.45 I've got kind of a, a point on there. So let's do the 0.45 here. Is that what you need? Yep. And then like a 1, 5. No, not five, three, that direction. That gets me kind of a, a spiky thing. Let's just go two so that I've got some more of like this part of the shape that I can kind of curve down. All right, this one I want to do the same thing to. So that was 0.45 here. Or was it 0.545 here? Yeah, and then two here. No, this one has to be 0.45. This one has to be two. A lot of this is <laughs> really trial and error. But okay, we've got those. So now I can go through and just try and round out some of these edges a little bit. What is your complaint about this? It's too much? No, because you don't like that either. So you're not liking those either. So overall, let's take stock of where we are. He's not Engi yet, but he's got the spirit. I need to make these the same color, and I need to carve out a little bit up at the top here um, because these are like clearly rounded here. He's cute. Thank you. I think he's getting there. Um, okay. Oh, and I think I'm going to need to do some sneakiness here as well, where I might want to take some of these uh, revolutions and such and move them forward in time. Like I might say, this is where that goes, so that I could cut across both of these and have it not take too much issue with that. Um, what I just said will, I think, make more sense in a second here. So these need to like kind of curve up and back. So what I'm thinking I can do is just create what I want that curve to be. Like that. And then I'd like to be able to just pull that through and cut both of these sides out.
And right now if I do that, it's cutting through this as well. I need, I need to make it a little bit higher anyway. But if I take this and say, actually, that happened before the circle, then it says, oh, my mistake. Although now it's just not cutting those out either. <laughs> this is going to be tricky. Wonder, can I? Oh, I can. Okay, that actually works out fine. And let's round out the backside of each of these arms while we're at it. I think for that I was going for like a 0.25, right? That looks just about right with what's going on over here. Round out those edges too. One thing that I think will make this look a lot better... Uh, actually, I want to keep the highlights on that top piece, but let's hide that sketch real quick. On the rest of these pieces here, I want to um, say that it, well, I guess this is like if the entire thing is shaded without edges, what it looks like, <laughs> which is a little goofy. Can I say tangent edges are hidden, but otherwise shaded with edges? That looks a little bit more sensible. Can I? I'd really like to select just this whole thing. Oh no, I don't want to fill it. I want to chamfer. And I just want to chamfer it by a little bit. Is that going to be too much? Are you going to be okay with that? I'll fix the music in just a second here. I just want to see if I can get this to accept that. Seems like it. It's rounding out that piece now. Okay, let's get some tunes back. Um, I want to go back into... See what other releases Patsu has. I like this album in general. This is um, Ivy League by Patsu. And we've heard some of these songs already. There's definitely going to be repeats. Let me make this side ideally the same shade as that side there. A little bit lighter. I think it's still probably looking better with um, those extra edges in there just because it's coming from a, a pixel art style. <laughs> but I'd like to smooth out the ends of each of these claws a little bit. It's just a little bit too menacing if they're like really sharp points. If I could just take each of these and scale it up, really, that would be great. Because I worry that right now they're a little bit too small. But let's get them some back legs. That was inside of this sketch here.
And I really kind of want them to go back this way. Oh, so that's where I was saying, rather than do that there, I might just create a sketch on this bottom plane and say that that's where the legs will live. And then we'll kind of build up to that point. Those are too tall, <laughs> but that's okay. I'll be able to trim them back up. It's kind of generally what we're looking at. And they're not uh, poking out of the top there. He's still, I think the main thing missing right now is the angry eyebrows. We'll get those in just a minute. From this side face, I want to just cut up and away a little bit to make these sharper. Okay. It's pretty rough, but I mean, on the original design, those back legs are pretty rough too. <laughs> It's got more pixels in my design. Now, sir, let's give you some angry little eyebrows. Little um, design tip, if anyone is watching this and uh, trying to take it as, uh, you know, the way things should be done. Um, I would highly recommend when you're doing something like this, um, actually starting out with everything pretty much like rough and geometrical. Um, so like if I had a flat surface here, I would really be able to uh, just make those eyebrows like directly on top of it with the sketch plane that I'm already using. As it is right now, I'm having to use a tiny bit of movie magic. I'm gonna make this little sketch here, extrude it out very thinly. And then this is actually gonna be the sketch plane on which I create uh, the eyebrows, although the eyebrows start pretty much like halfway down the eye. So let me actually change where I've got this. And by change, I mean, let me delete it and start over. We want it to be like down here on that A curve. Another pro tip, be an engineer. <laughs> It helps a little bit every now and then. Sometimes it makes things worse. Um, like in this case where I'm gonna tell this thing here to hide because <laughs> it's getting in the way. 
Okay, now I can actually handle this sketch. This just needs to be large enough that I can click it. So I really, I don't care about the size of it, much more other than that. In fact, I could make it a new thing, and then once I'm done with it, just make it like totally uh, see-through. Here, let's go from the front view. I'm trying to get like perpendicular to that eye. Um, the eyebrows are quite large. They're probably about like that thick. And they go up to a little bit over the eye. I think that's a pretty good shape where I can now say there's your center line. Put everything over there. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. What do you think? I think that's pretty nice. A Brennifer. Yeah. Okay, so now these. Come on now. Don't have to be that thick. That's a little aggressive. I think they're probably about there. This is going to be a brand new piece. And the eyebrows are pretty much black. Let me... They're maybe a little bit lighter than that. A little bit of transparency could help there. Might be about there. And let's um, bring that hidden part back. Where is it? Can I just say unhide all anywhere? Oh, here we go. This part is just hidden. I mean, let's say... Uh... Oh no, I don't need to assign a material to it. I just want to change the appearance for both of these back legs, so they're kind of homogenous. I mean, that's pretty much our boy, I think. It's pretty much the guy himself that we're looking at here. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's not perfect, him. but I think uh, if you were looking at a lineup of monsters and trying to figure out which monster this is supposed to be, you'd have a pretty good chance at uh, guessing him. And the thing he evolves into I think would actually be easier to design as well. This dude here, this is Lobstacle. Plastic barrel with legs. <laughs> Often described as a plastic barrel with legs. Lobstacles are docile and patient creatures. Uh, when, reacted, uh, when retracted into their plastic shells, the heavy lobstacle is almost impossible to move or overturn. Um, and the other form 
that traffic crab can turn into this uh, weevilite is also very fun. I might try and design this guy with um, the last like 30 minutes that we've got here of stream. Um, he's got some things to him that I think are going to make him easier to design. His body is kind of a, a regular shape and I can plan ahead and make sure there are spots for all these appendages to come off of him. Uh, the neck shouldn't be too bad. The head is going to be, I think, super easy and geometric. So I'm going to go for it. And if anyone wants to uh, keep an eye on our reference as well, light underscore candle. Putting that in the chat. HTTPS slash slash wiki dot cassette beasts dot com slash wiki slash weevilite. Oh, it actually pronounced uh, the name of this thing correctly, assuming I've been pronouncing it correctly. Okay, let's start with the head. The head of this thing is basically a traffic cone, uh, a stoplight. It's a little bit taller though than it is or it's a, a little bit wider at the top than it is at the bottom. So maybe something like that. And let's bring that in a little bit. Just because generally when I mirror things, I find that it's really easy to accidentally make them too wide. So yeah, if I had left this out here, that would have been way too wide. This is good though. Um, he's got two little traffic cone lights on his head. It looks like the lower one is a little bit smaller. And he's also got basically a baseball cap going along the top. Let's see. I'm gonna do this really roughly, but I think hopefully what I'm doing here is gonna make sense in just a second. Once I get rid of all of the excess lines here. This was absolutely not the most efficient way to do this, but it was a way to do this. Hmm. This might need to move down. I don't know why that affected the thickness of this thing here. So this should be generally a little bit further up. I think that's going to be good. Now I can mirror all these boys across. This guy's also going to have uh, an angry little eyebrow along his top light. We'll take care of that in a second. It's for now. Um, let's actually take the whole face. And this, I'm going to move backwards. Just about that. Just about that much. I'm also going to have to cut a little bit off of the back of the head here. But now I can extrude his little brim forward like so. 
probably about that much. That's pretty good. Both of his eyes. These are actually going to be new parts. And I think doing the eyes in this style is actually going to make my job a lot easier. Because what I'm going to do is just take these. Oh, we do not need to go that far in. Let's call this like 0 0.05. Yeah, I think that's just about perfect. Uh, the top light is red again. I don't know why it's doing that kind of sparkly business, but that's okay. The bottom light is green and a little bit transparent. See, and now that this top piece is just totally flat, it's really easy for me to go in and create a sketch just directly on top of that and say you are going to become a pair of angry little eyebrows. They all almost go like all the way up to the brim there. They don't need to go that far out. That might not even be thick enough. Hi Daffodil. Would you like to be a gamer? She might need to be a gamer for the end of stream here. Okay. So far, so good. <laughs> We've got his angry little face. Uh, the back of his head, like I was saying earlier, needs to come in just a little bit. chose like a completely backwards way to set up that sketch since really all I'm going to be doing is selecting this back part here saying I want to remove that bit but now the head is looking pretty much the way it ought to so we've got the head next we get this goofy little kind of gooseneck coming down from him. So that's going to be again a sketch from this plane. We'll have like a, a spline kind of deal. Just about like that I think. And I can tweak it some more, but I think that'll be good for the front. Then for the back. Yeah, that kind of lets it curve and get a little bit wider there. I can tweak these as much as I need to. But I think that's pretty much where I want it to be.
Can I make those just a wee bit rounder? Dang, that's pretty good. Um, the neck is a darker color. It's got kind of this like dark blue to it, like almost purplish. But I think that dark blue is going to be good. And that goes Gigantia into. 56. Wow. <laughs> yeah, uh, I chose. A Brennifer. The neck is kind of pretty. Yeah, it's working out. Um, with this design, I chose for the very first thing to be the cone, which makes sense because it's kind of the largest feature. But it also meant that everything else that I made was relative to this cone that is off at this weird angle. For this design, pretty much everything is based off of this uh, perspective right now. Like I'm just building the sketches with all of these interesting shapes, and then I'm pulling them out and tweaking them from there. And that gives me a lot more uh, freedom, a lot more mobility. Um, the body kind of looks like a scorpion's tail almost, or like a, a wasp. And so it's got kind of this, uh, here, let's, let's think about this. Spike back here, kind of to this front part of the body curves downward and then we've got the larger front curve of the body that's not it so that's kind of feeling like it adjacent so now I could take this and mess with it a little bit maybe Kind of goose-like, almost. If I want this back part to meet in a point, can I just do like kind of a sharp spline there? Mm -hmm. And then kind of a sharp spline here. And then just trim away all of the extra things. Uh, that looks pretty gruesome. It's not quite what I want from this. Especially this like back piece here. Doesn't look very smooth yet. Ooh, ooh, I don't like what that did. <laughs> I think this point needs to be further back, like so. That's feeling a little bit better to me, if a little bit more like stinger-ish. What do we think? We're building an angry goose. Oh, come on, bud. Gigantier 56. Show me the boy. D U C K one from Rim World. Yeah, this is a little, uh, a little war criminal ish. A Brennifer. It's good, I think. Okay, let's try extruding this out then. Again, symmetrical. Again, a new piece. And I want to 
want to try. Where is Gigantier this running into problems? Yeah, war criminal. So it's complaining about something going on near the back of this. I'm going to mess with some of the settings here. Partial? No. Variable? I don't know what uh, this is doing. What if I just select this whole part? Select. That whole thing. What if I say I want to Fill it part six entirely. Um, I don't want it to be affecting this at all here. So if it's just affecting like all of that, then now can I tell it to go further? Not really. Hmm. Maybe I need to first chamfer it down a little bit, two different distances. Just getting some more tunes back. Let's listen to uh, the Celeste soundtrack, why don't we? It's a pretty one. There we go. So let's see, chamfering two different distances. Right now it's not liking any of this at all. So which one of these are you? not liking that one, I guess. So you can have it both be 0.25. What if I have it set to 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.4 is too much. I think that has to do with this curve right here specifically is what it's not liking. Hmm. It kind of needs to be rounded along the top is the thing. And right now it's not. Let me go back into the sketch here, see what kinds of things there are that we can do to make that make a little bit more sense. I'm sure that at least some of this boils down to me just not knowing quite the right tools for this specific job, but I'm going to try this over again. And I'm going to use, um, I'm going to use three point arcs for the most part instead. And then I'll just set everything to be, um, tangent to one another so that they line up nicely.
I am liking the way that this is looking a little bit more. I think that's closer to the body shape that I wanted to begin with. Let's make that symmetrical, make it a totally new part. And now can I just tell this whole thing Hey, hey. Oh, that went a little bit too far. But that is looking much better. A Brennifer. Like, it's not as sharp on the back, but I guess that was the secret. Just use three point arcs. This also gives me these flat sections on the sides, which are going to be very nice for attaching limbs to this thing. Okay, <laughs> that worked out. Um, I'm also going to need to add a stripe onto the back of this. There it is. There's my boy. Um, and I'm also going to add mm -hmm. like a little collar around the inside here. <laughs> the Cassette Beast game files just popped up there. Like, hey, talking about us? Mm -hmm. Um, so here, he's got just a little collar that goes around his, uh, like, neck attachment. So I think if I put something like this here, where is the midpoint of this neck? The midpoint of the neck is, it turns out, just about right there. So I should be able to simply revolve this around this. Yeah. I could make that a little bit larger, but that's pretty much exactly what we want for that section. So I'm very happy with it. Um, yeah, let me just make this circle a tiny bit wider. There we go. We need um, kind of a band of uh, gray around this outside bit here. So I'm going to go back into this sketch and pick a, a specific section, I think pretty much like right here to here. That seems just about right. Nope, oh, nope. And then this arc doesn't have to be super precise, but I think that's going to be fine. I'm going to make this just as tiny as can be. Oh. Oh no. Okay, let's make those smaller first. Is that far enough up? I don't think so. Want it to be kind of here ish. And then, like, here ish.
And what am I, what am I doing with this exactly? Is I guess my hope is that I could take this and create like just a tiny little extra shell around the outside. Oh, I know, there's actually a much easier way to do what I'm trying to do here, which is take this sketch that I've got right now, select all of it, could not offset into these. Is it because you're trying to select this also? Here, let's try manually selecting these things. Yeah, it really was just because it was freaking out about that. Um, I'm gonna have this go out by like 0 0.01. So it's basically the same thing but it will show up a little bit above the rest. I've got this, but now I can take that same sketch that I used and use it to create the same exact thing, but just chop out this middle bit. Am I overthinking this? I might be overthinking this. I think going into this sketch, can I just undo this? What I could do, so like what I'm grappling with right now is just creating this gray section here. And I think it might be as simple as taking the thing as it currently exists and adding some like very small cuts to it. So just some things like here and here. Uh, that would make these technically three separate pieces so I could change the color of the piece in the middle. I think that's going to be the most sensible way to do what I'm trying to do. Just listening to this, I might have to stream Celeste at some point in the future. Okay, so let's try extruding this. Let's remove symmetrically. Now can I select just this middle piece? Yeah, I can. <laughs> okay. Sweet. And I think it's going to look, in this case, better when I, uh, say, shaded without edges. And then also hide the sketches that I've left visible. A Brennifer. Awesome. This is getting good. I'm going to keep streaming until I'm done with this. Um, and we're most of the way there. I need to create a couple of little leggies out front. I need to create these like back legs here. So let's, um, let's start on those. Oh, first, before I do that, I want to see 
Is there anything here that allows me to mirror um, parts of this thing? Oh yeah, okay. So I'll be able to create everything on one side and then just mirror it to the other side. That's also something that would have really helped me out if I had thought about it when I was creating the last piece. Um, okay, these legs are kind of insect-like. They seem to kind of, from the body, go like up and back. And then down in kind of an arc. Yeah, let's let's look at this from back here. So leg joint, maybe that size. This goes up and back, not too high. And then down to the ground over here. up through there like so. And um, I actually want to make these a little bit rounded. That's looking pretty good for one of them. There's another leg up here. It kind of curves down and forward just a little bit. The angle's not as severe. But this one seems to come down like over the the joint. So it's really more like that sort of deal, like a little bit less sharp. just tweak that entirely. This leg piece is bugging me. I think that's going to be good. And then he's got his pinchers. Like pieces are pretty close to the body. I'll add these kind of ball joints in here in a second. But for now, I just want the leg pieces themselves. And then I need the sketch visible again because I'm going to narrow these pieces down a little bit. I want to extrude out that same leg piece, but instead of adding, I'm just going to be removing like up to there.
so that those leg segments are a little bit separate and now the joint that they're attached to can come out and kind of connect them the rest of the way. I think that's probably fine. It's not the most elegant solution, but it's probably fine. Let me make the sketch invisible again, and let me just sanity check here real quick that I can mirror these parts across this plane. Yes. Okay. Good. Good. I'm not going to do that until I've made the front pinchers. And these are going to be a goofy shape. A Brennifer. <laughs> Phew. Yeah, that saved me some work. Um, let me just make all of these pieces really quickly. the same kind of bluish color as the neck and again let's see how this is looking without edges pretty good pretty clean okay pinchers are kind of going like up here on the body So how do I want to do this? Kind of that shape coming out. So let's try to start out just sketching from this side plane. Because if I can get the shape right, I can move it wherever I want to. So from here, they're coming out, reaching like almost to the ground. There's kind of a, an upper claw piece that maybe looks like that. Let's, um, before I get ahead of myself, put this like circular joint in here. So that now I can say this is coming tangent off of the side there, down. I think that's kind of the shape I'm going for. This bottom piece just extends out a little less far. Got a little space between them. What do you think? If I can take this and round it off effectively, I think that's going to be good I'm enough. Yeah. So let's go ahead and extrude this sketch out. It'll kind of go out to like there. And then I'll worry about removing it from that side. About that far. So it's still connected to the body. Merge scope. Can I say just merge with this piece? Yeah, okay. We learned a new thing. I can use that to just um, operate on a specific part of this. And now let's, on this face here, work out kind of the difference 
in the, the heights of these things. Is it gonna let me recognize this as a circle? Okay, yeah, it's giving me the center point there. So let's just kind of recreate the sketch basically. So I'm just gonna cut this bit in a little bit further. It's complaining about that. I don't know why. What's the error here? Boolean operation failed to return valid part. Oh, because something is getting sliced infinitely thinly. Let's just keep this as is for now. Well, no, I should be able to shrink that part there. Let's go back into the sketch see why it's behaving the way it is it's got to have something to do with this right down here right um, let's just I want something from the edge of this arc up to here. Cut like so. Is it going to be okay with that, I wonder? Yeah, it seems to be okay with that. So I can just remove a little bit from the side there and you won't be able to see how much has been removed on the other side but that's just a little bit of movie magic how much will you let me remove It's always a negotiation. Not very much at all. What if I just round out some of these top pieces? I don't need it to be one point something centimeters. Just a little bit. Maybe, I mean, they are kind of, <laughs> at this point, I'm just trying to justify it. They are kind of angular here. It'd be really nice if I could uh, carve this just a little bit inward. Actually, there, it's letting me now. It's interesting that it's treating that circle as such a different thing. Well, that's kind of interesting looking and it's giving it that like knuckle digit in between. This is um, kind of that same light gray as the back piece. Okay, so now I should be able to um, ba -ba -ba, mirror 
this, 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 and this across this plane here. And we've got ourselves a boy. <laughs> Let's turn the edges off. What do we think? Is this, uh, is this the boy in question? Our angry little traffic cone friend. friend? I like him. Yeah, I think this worked out. I think that we got there. Um, and I haven't tried something quite like this before, so I got to uh, experiment a bit. Looks good. Thank you. Okay, took a, an extra twenty minutes there. But we got there, and we got to listen to some fun Celeste music along the way. So, let me turn this back to something a little bit chiller as we uh, close up here. Um, so I think that's pretty much right about where we're going to call it today. Um, that was... That was fun. It was pretty successful. This is not quite chiller. How about this here? Yeah, that's pretty good. What a lovely <laughs> Sunday stream. Yeah, it was a fun time. Oh, and we've got a daffodil back there. Chomping on some food again. Sweet kitty that she is. And the cactus is not to be seen. I think he's hiding away in the uh, the closet as he likes to do. Um, yeah, thank y'all for being here and hanging out. Uh, next time I stream is. <laughs> Thanks for the stream. Thank you. Nice to see you in action. Uh, next time I stream is going to be on Tuesday, um, and I've got some ideas about what we're going to play. I want to get into like another game that I can kind of play consistently as a series um, because right now we've been kind of in a limbo state. I might actually continue my Hollow Knight Steel Soul run. Um, we'll see. I'll keep you posted. But in any case, thank you for being here. Have a good evening and I'll catch y'all on Tuesday. I enjoyed this. Thank you. Thanks. Me too. Bye-bye. Brennifer. Have a great evening. Gigantier 56. Good evening. Light underscore candle.